What was once the Polk County Courthouse now serves as the Polk County History Center and houses the Historical Museum and Library. The museum serves Polk's community through special events, volunteer opportunities, and educational programs. More details are coming up next on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Tina Mann, and joining me in the studio today is Mertis Young, the Historic Preservation Manager at the Polk County History Center. Hi, Tina. We love to be in your studio. Welcome. So, I have heard that Little Birdie told me that September is a big month for you guys. It is a big celebration month for sure. We have, um, we're going to open September with the wonderful joy of having completed part two of the restoration of the building. The plaster and painting repairs have been completed in the interior and the beautiful stencils have been repainted and it is just absolutely wonderful to see all that corrected and freshened up. So all of the exhibits are back open? The exhibits are, we're opening them gradually. We do have a few more um, corrections that need to be made. Particularly, this is very exciting, in the children's gallery, you know, the Discovery, Children's Discovery Gallery, some of the wall murals that had been painted were, um, well, the plaster repair, you know, painted over the murals, so we're finishing those up, and by the time, af after the Labor Day weekend, that gallery will be open again too. We're very fortunate we have a volunteer mural artist that will be doing that work. Casey Hall with DigiCheck Graphics has agreed to come in and be our volunteer mural artist. So we're looking forward to having that gallery open again as well. Also on September 1st, um, instead of going to you guys, they can go <laughs> to Frostproof. Why don't you tell us about what's going on there? And we are so excited about that. Actually, most of us will be in Frostproof that day. So Frostproof is celebrating its centennial anniversary and they have just decided they've just gone all out and they're going to make this an old-fashioned celebration two-day event and just all kinds of activities will be going on that day of particular interest to us we'll be joining the celebration on Saturday and dedicating six new citrus crate labels to the citrus crate label tour so down at Wall Street Park there will be, they're, they're, they're the banner type posters, and let me make sure I get them right. There's the Griffin's Delicious from Ben Hill Griffin. That's certainly a Frostproof brand. Uh, Frostproof, Razorback, Keen's Pride, Cody brand, and Crow brand. All um, six labels will be dedicated at that ceremony. So we'll be down there for that and eating barbecue and I think I heard something about chasing a greased pig, you know, those kinds of things. <laughs> and that's going to be at Wall Street Park. Wall Street Park, yes. Wall Street Park. That'll be a very interesting celebration as yet one of our other cities celebrated Centennial. They seem to be all going in a row here. Um, so also as um, speaking of celebrations, we're also having a historical marker dedication as well. We are. This is really exciting. On September 6th at 4 o'clock over Winter Haven, we're going to be installing and dedicating a second marker, which is a historic marker to uh, commemorate Publix and the history of Publix. And actually, this marker will be installed on the very first site of the very first public store. Um, it's, it's, called, it's at a restaurant now. It's called Tempo 1930, and it's at 58 4th Street in Winter Haven. So this marker will be at the site of the first public store. This predates public supermarkets. This is the public store. This is the one he rented, yes. the very first one. Yes. Well, that'll be exciting. So that's on September 6th at 4, so everybody can go out to that. And then let's go into our normal September programming. What is there for the families this month? For the families, we're, we've decided there are two, well, there are all kinds of 
interesting things to commemorate, but for us, for the families, for curators of curiosity, we're going to focus on Literacy Day, and then we're also going to focus on Constitution Day. So our activity will be, it'll be really a reading project, and also it'll be a project that will focus on the preamble to the Constitution. So um, our learners will have an opportunity to take a look. It's a child-friendly translation of the first six goals the preamble. So we have combined literacy and constitution so families can come in and they won't even know they're learning something because they're going to be having so much fun. Excellent. Always good. And this is the perfect time to come visit you guys for the architectural tour to see all the new plaster. It is. It is so pretty and so beautiful and I'll share one little hint. It's interesting every time we have an architectural tour someone asks a question and we hadn't thought about it or it just had never come up before so almost every time we'll get a, a little opportunity to do additional research on the building and share a new fact a recent question that came up in you know the two wings on the east and the west side of the building were built in 1926 and so with the stencil repairs and you know the things that have been going on someone's asked what the original ceiling was like in the 1926 courtroom well i learned it now has acoustic tiles because that's a room we use for meetings and sound management is important so i learned that it was uh, originally that smooth same um, plaster um, ceiling treatment that's in the 1908 courtroom. Good to know. A new fact that we learned just recently. Who knew? <laughs> so that's always on the third Saturday of every month. Yes. So that is the 15th of September this yes. time. Um, and I know we're excited about Lunch <laughs> and Learn because it's featuring you. I am so happy to present um, our Lunch and Learn program in September. It's September 18th. And the program is entitled Propaganda and Promise. And it is, um, it goes along with our exhibit, the World War I exhibit, commemorating the United States 100th anniversary in the conflict, the, war, the, the Great War. And um, it was just so interesting to me, Tina, when we started doing the research for the exhibit. You know, my, I have a very extensive background in marketing and public relations. I couldn't help but be just, I, I marveled at this, um, that the way this country moved its attitudes and its impressions about the war through this very extensive public relations marketing campaign through the use of propaganda posters. Mm -hmm. We had a president who won on a ticket of neutrality when the war first began, and within two years he is before Congress asking Congress to declare war on Germany. And it was just fascinating to me to see these posters and read these posters and how he engaged the entire country women, men, children, everybody participated some way in this war effort that we said absolutely we wouldn't be involved. So my presentation is not necessarily about the facts of World War I, but more about the propaganda posters that were used to influence the attitudes and impressions of people who were living in the country at the time of the Great War. One of the biggest advertising campaigns ever. That is true. I think actually, you know, from from my impressions, the greatest up, well, I guess until Disney came along, okay? I'll give, I'll give Disney the, the number one. <laughs> True. True. So what is our book club recommended reading this month? Well, it, it goes along with the exhibit. We've located a book. It's called Posters of the First World War, and it's written by David Bounds and Robert Fleming. And although it includes posters from around the world, because the, the propaganda posters were used in Europe as well as in the United States, and so this is a lovely book that has a nice collection of the posters and what they represented and how they were developed and why. So it's a, it's a fun book to flip through. So we're looking at it and we recommend it to everybody else. All right, because you look at some of those posters and you're, the, to the modern day person, there's some of them are pretty disturbing and it's surprising that you know, they would allow that, but, you know, times change. They, so it's important to have an explanation on that. They some were of very them. strong messages. You're right about that, very strong messages. And so I think that's why it's very important for us to go back in time and take a look at that. And let's talk briefly about the Bach Tower exhibit that's coming. Oh, we're so happy about having the Bach Tower exhibit um, come to the, to the museum. It's a temporary exhibit, and it was developed through the Florida Humanities Council program when the exhibit The Way We Worked was traveling through Polk County. And so to 
to complement that exhibit, Bach Tower created an exhibit about the way we worked at Bach Tower. And it is, it, it is called Creating an Icon, and it is about the, 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 um, the construction of Bach Tower. And so we are really excited that that's going to be on site at the History Center for uh, three months, I think, after December. It travels over to the, um, to the Museum of Tampa. But uh, we hope everybody will come on and take a look at that. It's really quite nice. And that will also be opening right after Labor Day. It absolutely will. Excellent. Everybody can take, um, go check it out. So now the piece de resistance <laughs> for September is your 20th anniversary. So why don't you tell us all about the celebration? Oh, it is such a celebration. You know, we have for five years been working on a plan to implement uh, new exhibits, a complete Re or enhanced reinterpretation of the history at the History Center. We're completing that and on September 19th as we celebrate our 20th anniversary we're going to open all those galleries that will feature all those new exhibits. New in the industry gallery, we have a new interpretation of the history of banking in Polk County. We have a, a another story about the history of phosphate. You know, phosphate's changed in its uh, presence in Polk County, so that right. story's being reinterpreted. The story of turpentine and lumber, and the cattle industry, and our farming exhibit, all those have been enhanced and reinterpreted, so we'll be opening that gallery. At that same night, is we'll be dedicating the county government, the services, Polk Proud, since 1861 gallery, and then in addition to that, we have a new gallery that we're opening upstairs that is the history of arts and culture in Polk County, and we're just thrilled about that. It is one of the stories that we haven't uh, collected until just now. So it is really exciting. People might go culture in Polk County in 1861. You'll be fascinated to learn about the way the pioneers entertain themselves and how they found um, culture and through music and um, gatherings. So we're going to be telling that story and the fun thing about it is we will feature a presentation, a walk through history. Jacob Summerlin, who will be portrayed by Daryl Ward, principal at the Harrison School of Performing Arts, and so Jacob Summerlin will be coming and talking with us that evening. And it's very appropriate because, of course, Jacob Summerlin, you know, donated the land that the History Center sits on. And the Florida Communities Council donated to this so that you could have this celebration. They absolutely did. One of our great partners, the Florida Humanities Council, has been through certainly my time at the History Center, a wonderful partner, resources and funding and just all kinds of um, just very valuable collaborations with us. So that celebration will actually be held in the evening. In the evening at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. And everybody's invited to come out. It's going to be a great time and, you know, everybody should come out and see the, all the changes and all the new galleries and just experience the wonderful event. We have, um, I think it's okay for me to announce this because this is a very <laughs> important part of the Arts and Cultural Gallery. The Polk Arts Alliance every year features um, uh, and they have an inductee into their Arts Hall of Fame. And so this year we will announce, we're announcing that within the Arts and Cultural Gallery, we host, we'll be a permanent host site for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. So those who have been named in the past will be listed on that particular feature. And Excellent. at this event, they will announce this year's inductee. So September 6th, September is a really fun, busy, busy month at the History Center. Everybody should come see you. We hope so. All right, well, thank you for coming on. Thank you, love being here, Tina. Polk County has a rich history and heritage, and the Polk County History Center is continuously thinking of new ways to help Polk residents experience that history. The museum's collection includes natural and cultural objects related to Polk and the greater central Florida area that represent our history from pre-Columbian to present day eras. The artifacts on display at the museum represent individuals, cultural groups, and events significant to the region. Located at 100 East Main Street in Bartow, the History Center is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. For more information about exhibits and events, you can check them out on the web at polkhistorycenter.org or give them a call at 863-534-4386.